Hey guys, welcome back to another Jack Stand Driveway video. Today we're going to be seeing how much of a difference does disconnecting sway bar actually make on your Subaru with you know, dual independent suspension front and back. So to start off, I've measured from the center of the wheel to the top of the fender and that in the front is 19 inches and in the back is 18 inches. I'm going to put some ramps on opposite tires, um, opposite tires, and see what kind of um, down travel and up travel we get, and then we'll see what the difference is when we disconnect the sway bars. This is with sway bars connected. So with sway bars connected, the front has one inch of drop and no 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 I'm sorry one inch of compression two inches drop and the back has three inches of drop and one and a half inches of compression that's with sway bars connected that is max articulation that's kinda sad but that's part of the deal when you have a Subaru okay now we have the sway bars disconnected let's see what we get Okay, so the front dropped a total of three inches uh, when before it dropped only two, and it's not—it hasn't even lifted yet, so there's still more in it. And it compressed uh, two inches. Did I say compressor drop? Yeah, so three, it dropped three inches and compressed two total, and it dropped three. No, compressed three and a half and dropped three on the rear. So it, I mean, it didn't even lift, it made it all the way up, didn't lift, and it still has more in it. With sway bars disconnected, that's kind of, that's kind of crazy. I mean, this is, this is the same articulation as my Jeep has. Stock, my stock Grand Cherokee WJ has the same articulation in it. When you go to the uh, truck. With sway bars connected, so I mean, I wonder what that'll do with sway bars disconnected. But anyway, that's fairly impressive, actually. It was kind of not very easy to do, honestly. I'm gonna see if, how bad it is rolling on the road, and we might just keep it disconnected. So, I'll be damned though. Let me, let me show you what we've got going on here. Yeah, I think we gotta go I mean, the trail and see how far it is when we lift the tire. This is what's most impressive to me is the tuck in here because it did not fill the wheel well at all before, but now it's it's completely tucked in there. And the drop back here is fairly significant. This tuck is still, I think this still has more left in it in the front. And I'd be interested to see what it does on a trail to be honest because there's the, I definitely will still lift tires on this trail, but... I mean, because you saw, I mean, I spun tires trying to make it up here, and I just kind of made it this time. I was expecting it to spin tires, but it kind of just shot up the up the ramp, which is kind of crazy. My camera won't focus for some reason. There it is. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, it definitely makes a difference. So I went ahead and wrote down everything, um, and with the total articulation with the sway bars connected, um, it compressed an inch and dropped two inches. In, in the back, it had one and a half inch of compression and three inches of drop. With it disconnected, two inches of compression, three inches of drop. In the front and in the rear, we had three inches of compression and three and a half inches of drop, which leads us to a total gain. Uh, and this is a total gain in this experiment, and we didn't actually max out the suspension yesterday with those uh, with the ramps, so it still had more in them. But as far as this experiment, it gained in the front an inch to uh, of, of up travel and an inch of down travel, and 
an inch and a half of up travel on the rear and a half inch of down travel on the rear which leads to a total of two inches in the front and a total of two inches in the back which is a total of four inches of, of uh, total articulation in the entire car by disconnecting the sway bars. Uh, again, there's probably going to be more difference than that when you actually take it on the trail um, because again the sus suspension was not maxed out yesterday uh, with the ramps so uh, it's definitely make, definitely makes a difference um, and I did take it on a road test and it was smoother yesterday I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it disconnected or not but as far as the experiment goes do disconnecting sway bars actually make a difference the answer is yes yes they do would I recommend doing it if you're off-roading probably probably if it's you know if it's a longer trail then yeah but if it's just a short because I normally just do short trails if, if I don't have a quick disconnect system I might I'm gonna start working on a quick disconnect system if you don't have a quick disconnect system then I would just disconnect it before you do a big trail but yeah it definitely makes a difference hopefully this helps some of you guys and uh, see you guys in the next one